Well, I'm Sally Snyder from the Library Commission. I'm the Children and Teen Young Ad uh, Children and Teen Library Services Consultant or something like that. And I love to read and I love to talk about what I read. So this is perfect, except it's hard to pick only 10. So you see why it says 10 to 12 and I told you I had really 14. So we're gonna go fast and I hope that uh, you find titles that are of interest to you. So let's see if I can get this to move. We'll start with fiction for younger teens. Myla is in seventh grade and she finds herself the target of increasingly uncomfortable physical attention from some of the seventh grade boys. At first it starts slowly and she thinks it's probably really innocent, but her stomach turns and she really feels uncomfortable whenever she's around any of the boys in this one group. Whenever she protests, and there's never a teacher around when she protests, they say she is being overly sensitive. One of her friends is jealous of the attention she is getting, and another friend keeps suggesting she tell a teacher or the principal. He was a victim of bullying the year before due to his sexuality, and Myla encouraged him to go to a teacher, and he is frustrated that she isn't following her own advice. In the end, it turns out that the boys were playing a game for points they got points for saying something inappropriate to her or for touching her. This is well written. Myla's confusion and frustration are clear and believable. The resolution of the situation is reasonable and satisfying. This is an import, important book for middle schoolers. Dell is a junior in high school and he has a reputation for being a ladies man, but he isn't really. He has always been interested in Kira, basically since kindergarten. But now she is available and he knows he has to be careful not to be the, the um, rebound guy. One Sunday when he was daydreaming at church, a group of teens, including Kira, walks up to the front of the church. Impulsively, Dell joins them. Then he found out he had just volunteered to be part of a group taking the purity pledge, choosing and celebrating abstinence. Oh, <laughs> as he supports others in his group, and he does, he's a supportive guy, he slowly begins to realize he isn't the good guy he thought he was, but rather has enjoyed the double standard he hadn't recognized before, and he sees that he needs to change. So this is a real positive look at, I didn't really see this, and now I can see how that was wrong. Ross is 12, and he's in seventh grade, and he has an extremely rare eye cancer, a mass just above his right eye, and he's more comfortable keeping that eye closed. His best friend since first, first grade is Abby and Isaac joined them in fourth grade, but this year Isaac seems to be avoiding them. Once his treatment starts, Ross can no longer be invisible at school. He tolerates overly sympathetic teachers, exaggerated beliefs of his condition, and jokes from classmates. But the recurring meme of him as cancer cowboy because he has to wear a hat puts him over the top. These, this is based on the author's experiences. It's a fictionalized book, but it's based on his experiences. It is well written with believable characters and the story will pull in the readers. It starts with Ross, and this is a quote, lying on a steel table all too aware of the giant ray gun pointed at him. <laughs> Don't know how you can stop reading at that point. Um, you heard a mention of Prairie Lotus. I finished this, it's, it's wonderful. After the death of her mother, Hannah, who's 14, and her father leave California, travel around here and there, and end up in La Forge, a town in the Dakota Territory to start a new life. Hannah's mother was Chinese, and she and her father, who is white, face ignorance and racism wherever they go. This time, while some townspeople are unaccepting, they do find some friends to help them with their new business, a dry goods store. Hannah hopes to use the skills her mother taught her to design and stitch new clothing for the townspeople. A school library journal mentions the author addresses, and I quote, racism, immigration, Native American reservations, invisible histories, and parental loss with skill and heart. And I'm so glad, thank you, Tammy, for mentioning that the gold, uh, Golden Sword lists are up because this is on the list for the 2021-2022 Golden Snow Sower novels list. Shuri, as you may know, in this book, she's 13, and she is the younger sister of T'Challa, the king of Wakanda, and she must find out what is killing the heart-shaped plants her country depends on. She and her protector in training, Kamara, travel to a few other countries, 
and kids or readers will love this. It's via an invisible or it can be invisible or it can be visible plain light craft that zips them the here and there in pursuit of the information she needs. The technology Shuri designs and uses, as well as the danger they are both in, will keep readers wondering what will happen next. And I'm hoping there's going to be more uh, books about her. Two nonfiction books for teens I'm going to mention. This is a full color graphic memoir. The author tells of her experience at age 19 with her mother's cancer and death. Straightforward about her emotions and thoughts, she says on page eight that this book is for my mom and for me and for anyone struggling with loss who just wants someone to get it. At the end of most chapters are a variety of items. One is a flow chart for should she answer the phone or not? Um, there's a helpful uh, page that has helpful suggestions of what to say and what not to say when talking to someone who is grieving. There are there the listing of the stages of grief and other items. While the subject is sad, the approach and the strong writing in the book pull the reader along, and there is humor in here too. This is an excellent purchase for a teen collection, telling it like it is with heart and compassion. And I, you've probably heard of this book. I hope you've read it. Reynolds takes the information Dr. Kendi has researched and placed in his National Book Award winning title, Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America, and in Reynolds style, shares this information with teen readers. Using short chapters, occasion, occasional large and bold type to make a point, and clear explanations of history, even though Reynolds says more than once, this is not a history book. It is a very readable, look at the beginning of racism and how it has persisted through the years. As School Library Journal says, the tone of the writing varies from provocative to funny to gentle, and that's very well put. They also say it's highly recommended for libraries serving middle and high school students, and I heartily agree. It's also good for adults. Some fiction for older teens. Clap When You Land is by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is told in free verse, and it is in the alternating voices of two almost 17-year-olds who find out about each other, their half-sisters, after their father dies in a plane crash. Yahara lives in New York with her parents and misses her father when he travels to the Dominican Republic every summer. She thinks it's for business. Camino lives with her aunt in the Dominican Republic and loves the summer since that is when her father is with her. Coming to terms not only with their, their father's death, but also, also with his secret families is hard for each of them. And now their futures are at risk too. A very well put together story um, of uh, discovery and disappointment and betrayal and the importance of family and whatever your family is, it needs to be strong for you. It, this is one of a number of books on the best fiction for young adults nominee list if you want to go to the hub, which is the Young Yalsa, um, wait for it, blog, you can find out what books have been recommended for the list. That doesn't mean they're gonna win. We won't know till January, but this is one that's been suggested. David is skinny and has no muscle. On the last day of school before summer break, he receives an unexpected hard slap in the locker room after gym class and he goes down on the floor and he finds out that someone has recorded it. It goes viral and he vows to work hard all summer to build up some muscles so he won't be that guy anymore. He finds a gym he can afford and gets to work. As he gets to know some of the regulars, he learns some facts. There is no way he can build the muscles he wants in three months, not happening. Before long, he is on steroids, telling himself it is only for his senior year of high school so people will forget who he was. He is aware of the effects of steroids and he keeps a close hold on his temper knowing that is one thing that can snap away in an instant. Most of the time he keeps a hold. And then he is also tracking the other physical effects on his personal body parts, which is another issue of steroids. His life collapses on him when his friend and mentor dies suddenly from the strain of steroids. He has uh, separated himself from his father and his home and has been uh, staying with his friend who has now passed away. So it's embarrassment, determination, loss, and then ultimately recovery of his health and of his family. And this is also a best fiction for young adults nominee for 
a, a, a suggestion for 2021. This might be long, but oh my, is it good. Coriolanus Snow, I didn't know that was his first name. In this book, he is 18 and he is taking his one chance to rescue the House of Snow since their financial disaster in the war and the death of his father. The reaping for the 10th Hunger Games are underway. So this is early on in the Hunger Games. He's 18 and it's the 10th um, year for it. Coriolanus has been approved to be a mentor for one of the tributes. This is the first time they've even thought to give the tributes a mentor. This is also the first time observers will be encouraged to provide approved items for the tributes during the games. Due to a suggestion from Coriolanus's class, who have been encouraged to suggest improvements since people really aren't watching the games much. He is hoping for a good contender because he needs to win in order to go to college, but he is dismayed when he is assigned the girl from District 12. But Lucy Gray Baird is interesting and captures the crowd with her showmanship and singing. It's a fascinating look at an early Hunger Games and how the games began to evolve and the choices, every little single choice that Snow makes on his way to becoming the person he was when Katniss came along. The main characters are seniors in high school, which is why it's on the older list, although uh, younger teens could read this too. There's just a little bit of language in there. Pepper is stressed about her grades, her college applications, and the Twitter feed for her mom's corporate account. Her mom and dad are divorced, but they own Big League Burgers, now the fourth largest burger chain in the country. Jack works with the, his parents in the local deli they own. So these are the two people that are going to be tweeting. And then it looks like Big League Burgers has stolen the recipe for the grilled cheese sandwich they're promoting. And it looks like they stole it from this little deli. And the tweet war begins. Muted graphic novel, muted color. Um, Jack Hyde is a high school senior and he lives with his mother in the New Mexico desert. He wants to study oceanography, but his mom wants him to stay away from water since his father drowned many years ago. His best friend and neighbor Maria supports him and she is interested in being more than friends, but he is not picking up on that. He is dealing with something strange that happens when he is around water. He can control the water. And also he is dealing with his feelings for the openly gay Kenny in his class. And I'm just going to quickly say The Girl in the White Van is um, April Henry's newest book. I think it just came out last month, maybe July, about a girl who is kidnapped. And there's another girl in the trailer where she's taken. And also Green Lantern Legacy. I just had to include this, Min Lee. This is a, a Vietnamese American Thai who is 13. And he, when his grandmother passes away, the ring comes to him. He finds out that his grandmother was a Green Lantern and the ring found him and now he is. Uh, it's a wonderful book of uh, uh, Green Lantern mythology and action. Thank you. Any comments or questions or suggestions? Yeah, there are a couple of questions in the chat or comments in the chat when you were uh, talking. Uh, Clap When You Land has an amazing audiobook. Amber says. Oh, great. Yeah, I agree. It was pretty great to learn about Snow's past. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's see. How do I stop sharing my screen? Um, I... You can leave it for now. It's okay. Oh, I'll take care of it from here. Okay. You're good. Oh, oh wait. Because <laughs> I'll switch it over. Yeah. Um, you still have like a minute. Anybody have any um, suggestions, thoughts, anything, ideas for Sally? She obviously needs more books to put on her list. <laughs> Yes, tell me more. <laughs> I'm going to have a longer list when we do the Encompass Live. So, you know, mm. we'll get that scheduled soon. Yeah. So I meant to say, I, I read my comments because that keeps me on time. And I know it's a little more dry, but that way I get the parts in there I want and I get done in time. So I mm -hmm. think that's mm -hmm. expected. Oh, they called us enemy by George Takai. I just finished that uh, two or three days ago. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Takay. It's okay to be decay. Sorry. <laughs> I've got to remember that. That's one that I want to read. I'll have to borrow that from you, Sally. I think I still have it. It's from the library. Also, I ha at the library, holding for on hold for me right now is Punching the Air by um, Zoboy and oh, I can't think of the gentleman's name, and I can't wait to read that. That'll be on my list, I'm sure.
All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Uh, get my screen back up here. Do you see again?